If you'd like to keep up to date with the latest and greatest features that the Home Assistant team are delivering, then you'll be keen to hear what they've got in store for us in August. The coming 2025.8 release has some great new functionality that I've been checking out. So let's take a look and see what is in store. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to Byte of Geek, where I focus on home assistant and smart home technology on the channel. Now, I'm sure many of you are still playing around with the functionality we received in the July update of Home Assistant, yet here we are with new features and breaking changes already for August. I've been playing around with the new release and looking over what we can expect to see, and I think it's fair to say it's a pretty interesting set of functionality coming our way. Now, just to mention, this is a beta release of the software, and as such, the next release may not contain everything listed. Sometimes things just don't work out as expected and need to be pulled and saved for a future release, or sometimes we might get some additional items added. As always, I'll put a link to the release notes in the description of this video, should you want to go and read about that in more detail. So to start off with, let's take a look at what new functionality we can expect to see in August. In terms of new features, well, August seems to be primarily focused on continuing the use of AI within Home Assistant. Recently, there has been some great functionality added in this area, and the team have reviewed the direction of travel and look to continue this with the following new features. So first up, we have improvements in the streaming of text-to-speech that was introduced for local text-to-speech system in the previous release of Home Assistant. This time around, it's now being made available to the voices that are included in the Home Assistant Cloud subscription, which I think is a pretty good thing. Uh, you know, it basically adds more value for those that you know, use this as a way to support the Home Assistant project. There's also a new AI task integration that allows you to generate data using AI. So for example, you can provide a file or camera footage and ask AI as to what is happening and you will receive output in a format of your choice, which you, know, you can then use within your automations and scripts. There's actually a really good example provided in the release notes of a template entity that updates every five minutes. And basically it's counting the number of chickens in the coop and seeing uh, you know, that from the footage that's actually supplied via a camera. I think this is a really powerful set of functionality and basically will enable some amazing things to be achieved if you're using this in your smart home. You could easily apply that example to many different scenarios around your home with very little effort. Alongside this, you can now configure the default AI task entity to use. And when configured, then a new suggest with AI button will appear in various places in Home Assistant. However, in this release, it's going to be limited to just automations and scripts. So, for example, if you're writing an automation and you go to save it, uh, then it can help you populate the details on the form that pops up, um, you know, taking into account other automations, etc. I think it'll be interesting to see how and where this is rolled out into Home Assistant. We already see this kind of functionality in things like Microsoft Office and other AI integrated products. And I think as long as it's not pushed into your face all the time, then you know this kind of integration does work out to be quite useful. Now, in terms of integrations, well, Home Assistant continues to expand upon its vast list of integrations with four new ones for this release. So first up, we have Open Router. So this allows access to over 400 different LLMs through the Open Router API and effectively gives you a unified interface to AI integrations for all of your automations. Next, we have the Ubiquiti UISP ROS integration, and that will now allow you to monitor and manage your ROS devices through the UISP platform. Third on the list is Uptime Kuma, giving you the option to monitor the status of your services and websites all from within Home Assistant. And finally, we've got an integration for those of you that drive a Volvo. Now you can connect your car uh, to Home Assistant and monitor things like your battery status, vehicle location, and other vehicle details. Along with the new integrations, there are a lot of updates to existing ones. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull out some of the key ones from the list. Um, we've got 
um, real link cameras uh, have new Wi-Fi signal sensors for IP cameras. It's got post recording controls and pre-recording entities as well. AI task and open AI conversation integrations now support camera and file attachments. Wiz will now support fans as will the SwitchBot cloud integration. That's got the uh, fan support as well. And SmartThings has had vacuum support added as well. Matter continues to get better and better with every release. Uh, now with microwave oven and temperature control device support. And those of you that use image, uh, well now you can uh, upload files directly via a new action. As you can see, there are plenty more updates to integrations in the list. So definitely worth checking out the release notes in the link in the description of this video. Now, if you weren't aware, integrations in Home Assistant have a quality scale, which represents how well the integration is coded, how maintainable and testable it is, as well as how good an end user experience it provides. In this release, there are a number of integrations that move up to platinum level. So those being a gradient for the uh, quality monitoring devices, Discovery, which is for smart meters, uh, Eheim Digital, which is related to smart aquarium devices, and Pegel Online, which uses data from the German Federal Waterways and Shipping Administration. Likewise, for silver level, we have Amazon Alexa devices, we've got Homey, we've got uh, Mealy, which is an open source self-hosted recipe manager, and Tanker Koenig, a fuel price monitoring integration. And finally, moving to bronze level, we have Onkyo as well. Um, you know, it's really good to see all the hard work from those contributing, being recognized in the releases to make these integrations better for everyone. As for other notable changes of this release, well, there's a new device class for absolute humidity, which supports both sensor and number entities. Managing groups has been improved, so now you can reorder members, letting you have them exactly as you want them. And if you're a user of the system diagnostics, then that's been extended to now include a device analytics dump download, which I'm sure many of you will find very useful and uh, the history stats integration well that's been up updated to make it even easier to configure with the inclusion of a preview in the options flow the template uh, integration which had a lot of work last month that has been updated again with lots of new functionality so now you've got uh, the template based numeric sensors can now be set to an unknown state Availability templates are now supported in the template helper config flow. Uh, alarm control panel, image and select platforms now have a preview functionality added uh, to the config flow. Uh, template locks now support the opening state and optimistic options have been added to YAML configuration for multiple platforms, including uh, switches, vacuums, fans, lights, locks, and alarm control panels. Some really good stuff taking place there. I'm sure many of you use uh, groups within Home Assistant, and they're a great way of controlling multiple entities at the same time, but sometimes you just want to be able to control the individual members of the group as well. So now you can do that with members of the lights and the covers group. I think that's a great addition to this release. And last but not least, the time trigger has been updated to allow you to specify weekdays in the time trigger, giving you the ability to create automations that trigger at specific times on specific days of the week. That's a great update that I'm sure many of you will find super useful. This release, we are looking at quite a few breaking changes with some popular integrations in the list. So this could affect a number of users. There are several changes to integrations that change the reporting standby state for entities. So if you're relying on that uh, in kind of like your scripts or your automations, then you're going to need to update those. The integrations that have been updated with this are as follows. So we've got Android um, Debug Bridge, aka ADB. Uh, we've got Apple TV, Cambridge Audio, uh, Lookin. 
Media Room, Roku, Snapcast, and Sony PlayStation 4. EcoVax has had the battery properties of the legacy vacuum entity migrated to uh, separate battery and charging entities now. And there is a change to the Husqvarna auto mower integration that kind of improves things if you're using multiple mowers, but basically the, uh, the summary field of calendar events, uh, you know, if you're using that in automations, you need to be aware that that will now include the device name as a prefix. So you'll probably have to make updates there to your automations. Um, the Mealy integration is updated to have the battery property removed from Home Assistant and replaced with a battery level sensor instead. Uh, in the Real Link integration, the Wi-Fi signal strength indicator is changing from a zero to four scale you know, to represent the bars uh, to a value in the DBM. Uh, ranges so that will be based on values between minus 85 and minus 30 dBm which gives you a rough uh, translation of values as shown in this screenshot. There's a significant change to templates in this release and that is uh, returning none from a template binary sensor state template that's now interpreted as an unknown state rather than an off state. So that's probably gonna catch a few people out. So if you don't uh, specifically want that, then you'll need to update your templates to return false. If you're running Unify Protect, then you'll need to upgrade to at least version 6.00 as support for anything lower has been removed. This now migrates to the Unify Protect public API. If you're using a Whirlpool washer or dryer appliance, then the door state is changing in this re release to now be reported as a binary sensor instead of being part of the main, uh, the main machine state sensor. So um, you know that will only now report the cycle state. So if you've got automations or scripts uh, set up to report that you know the door is open or something like that, you're gonna have to update that with this release. And finally, Z-Wave will require an update in this release requiring you to use uh, Z-Wave JS Server 3.2.1 or greater. So there you go. That is everything we can expect to see in the August release of Home Assistant. Some really interesting updates there, especially if you're using AI in Home Assistant. What are you looking forward to in this release? Let me know in the comments below. But if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really does help with YouTube's algorithm. Let other people get to see this video as well. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.